So, good day class. Today, we are going to discuss our week 3 lesson entitled Conscience and its Formation. So, this is our quarter 1, week 3. So, before we begin our lesson, let us first pray the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I praise you, Lord, for creating me in your divine image. Thank you for giving me a free will to know you and love you. Open my heart to your teachings and help me to form my conscience according to your will. Please strengthen me with the virtues of faith, hope, and love, and especially prudence. Grant me your loving guidance each day and send me the graces to always do your will, even to the most difficult times. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, my dear students, what is conscience? And how do we say that we have a conscience? And why do we need to form our conscience? So here, the meaning of conscience, it is not something we create by ourselves. Okay? Or merely what was taught to us by our family or our society. And rather, this law is a force within us. Ito daw yung conscience. So, sabi dito, conscience is at work when we decide what is morally good or morally evil. Okay, so this is from the uh, uh, church document, which is the Gaudium et Spes. So, sabi dito, when we act bad, no, we feel guilty. And if we act good, we feel good. So, conscience somehow directs us on what to do. Okay. So, through our conscience, we meet God who calls us as we make a loving response. So, it is our way of judging the good or evil of a concrete thought, word, or deed. So as true images of God, we need to obey our conscience. For in obeying our conscience, we become good. We become the persons we are called to be by God. Okay? So we have to remember that because of our conscience, we are able to distinguish between what is good and what is bad. No? Just like my example kanina. Kapag may ginagawa tayong mabuti, no? we are proud of it. We are happy. At saka pag may ginagawa tayong masama, no? uh, we are some, somewhat uh, scared siguro. No? And we feel guilty. So itong mga nararamdaman natin ito, this is like our guiding force. It is a force within us. So, sasabihin natin uh, siguro ito na nga yung ating konsyensya. So, now, let us go to the levels of conscience and let us discuss each one of them. Okay? So, first one is uh, fear conscience. So, a person acts only to escape punishment, to be praised or accepted by authority. So, in this kind of conscience, it is developed when we are young. Dito, kumbaga, nag, nagmumula ang ating, uh, sa psychology, ito yung sinasabing uh, positive reinforcement tsaka negative reinforcement. No? Sa negative reinforcement kasi kapag may nagagawa tayong mali, no? kapag aalalahanin natin yung uh, mga kalokohan natin, for example, ng mga bata tayo, no? kapag siguro naging makulit tayo, no? Ano ang kahahantungan natin? We get punished. We get scolded. Therefore, we won't be doing them again. Pero kapag may mga magaganda naman tayong ginagawa, tayo ay pinupuri. No? We receive rewards from our parents no? or our guardians. No? And that is for the positive reinforcement naman. Okay? So that's for the fear conscience. If we do good, we are rewarded. If we do bad, we are punished. Therefore, doon tayo, doon tayo bumabase ng ating mga uh, gagawin, gagawin 
sa buhay. No? So, fear conscience. Next one. Uh, moral or ethical conscience. We hear a person acts on the basis of his values. So, in this kind of conscience, we can relate those people who are really uh, principled. No? So, they are mature in terms of uh, moral education. Maganda ang kanilang pagpapalaki. No? So, no matter how strong will you tempt this kind of people, no? kahit paulit-ulit pa silang uh, natetempt to do bad acts, no? they will stand firm because in the first place, no, he has values with him. No? Daladala niya ang mga aral niya sa buhay. Okay? So that's for the moral and ethical conscience. The next one is the uh, uh, Christian religious conscience. So the Christian faith illumines, clarifies, and deepens what we know is truly worth of being a person. So in this level, it refers to the teachings of the church regarding our conscience. We know that the church is also a school for us to know what our moral standards. In the church, we seek the truth kung ano nga ba ang tama at saka mali. So now, for the uh, formation of conscience. Okay, so we read this slide. So our conscience is formed gradually through the natural educational agents of our daily upbringing. So our school training, you know, in your case, St. Paul College of Ilocosur, uh, the parish catechesis, you know, depende kung ano yung program ng parishes ninyo. Uh, do you uh, go, to, go to Sunday school, for example? And the influence of friends and social contact. Okay? So, sa ating pakikisalamuha, sa ating mga kaibigan, at sya kung kahit sino man, no? We learn from them and we also form our conscience from them. Okay, so it is formed gradually in faith and through personal and ecclesial life, uh, ecclesial prayer life. This is from uh, CFC. Okay, so what then are the ways in order for us to form our conscience according to the Catholic teaching? So uh, we read. So, by attending to the Word of God and the teachings of the Church. And by responsiveness to the indwelling Holy Spirit. And by critical reflection on our concrete moral choices and experiences of our daily life. So, this means that we should use our rationality. No? Gawitin natin ang ating utak. mag din tayo. They say that when we uh, grow up in age, we also uh, grow in experience. So we should learn the lessons of the past in order for us to decide well of our future actions. So the early stage of conscience is formed, which is due to the internalization of parental and social rules and ideals. So, this line means that we are formed by our parents or kung sino man ang nagpalaki sa atin. No? Diyan nagmumula ang ating mga aral sa buhay. They are our roots of our moral formation. So, who we are now also depends upon the upbringing our guardians or our parents uh, offered us. Okay? Number two, as the child grows older and progresses towards adulthood, emphasis has shifted from imitation and parental and uh, social control to a personal responsibility. So here, we become uh, responsible as we grow in age. Hindi na tayo umaasa na lang sa pag-guide ng ating mga magulang, kundi we have acquired all the lessons from them and even the values. Hence, we become autonomous or we become free beings who know uh, what is right and wrong. 
and I hope that uh, this is true. No, so how about you? Do you think uh, you can already uh, decide for yourself? No, alam niyo na ba kung ano ang tama at saka kung ano ang mali? No, hihintay niyo pa ba ang guidance ng mga nakakatanda? I know na you are all uh, uh, thinking maturely already. Okay? So there are two types of formative factors. So first one, heart factors. So like uh, reading on Jesus' teachings and actions and our effective prayer and uh, sacramental life. So when we say heart factor, we are being inspired by Jesus Christ's uh, teachings and his ministry, his life. No, We are drawn into uh, imitating him. Okay? And the next uh, formative factor is the mind factor. Like uh, paying attention to the sacred and certain doctrine of the church so here in order for us to have a more mature conscience we listen to what the church is teaching us and hindi lamang ang pakikinig no kundi we should also be witnesses meaning to say we should apply what we are learning in church we should apply them in real life scenarios so let's read the slide. Informing our, uh, informing their consciences, the faithful must pay careful attention to the sacred and certain teaching of the church, for the Catholic Church is by the will of Christ, which is the teacher of the truth. It is her duty. No, it is her duty means to say, uh, yung simbahan. It is her duty to proclaim and teach with authority the truth which is Christ and at the same time to declare and confirm by her authority the principles of the moral order which spring from the human nature itself. So this is from the church document Dignitatis Humanae, yeah, number 14. So in simpler terms, my dear students, this slide or uh, this passage would like to tell us that we should pattern our actions to Jesus. No? As we remember on our first lesson, sabi natin, Jesus is the norm of our moral lives. Okay? So, ang role ng ating simbahan, no? the Catholic Church, is to proclaim and to teach us na si Cristo ang, uh, ang dapat uh, standard ng ating uh, mga actions sa buhay. So, we pattern our lives to Him. Okay? So, as a summary to this lesson with your students, we need to remember these things. First is that conscience is the most secret core and sanctuary of, of a man. So, it is an inner law which commands man to do good and evil. No? Next one. This conscience develops gradually through discernible stages. So the formation of our conscience is a process which goes along with our natural growth and development. And lastly, everyone has the duty to form his or her conscience by educating and training it. So we do this by learning and taking to heart God's words in Scripture. So, uh, thank you for listening to this pre-recorded video lecture. So, if you have questions, you may ask them to me via my Schoology profile. So, let us end this lesson with a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving God, lead me beyond myself to care and protect, to nourish and shape, to challenge and energize both the life and the world you have given. Give me the courage I need to confront those things that compromise my consciences or threaten my integrity. Give me, most of all, the courage to follow those before me who challenge wrong and challenge it. 
whatever the cost. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, thank you, and God bless.